How many of you are as lost as I am? Anybody, anybody? That last emoji, Grace sent it to me. I asked her to send me uh, an emoji, and she sent, you love to golf, you love to fish, and you love to sleep. So I don't know what she was saying. Salem, the greatest joy that we have right now is sitting in this room on any uh, given Sunday. They're representatives of six generations. Amen. Thank you for starting that hand clap. I said that it's a great joy that on any given Sunday in this room, there are six generations of people. A generation, what's a generation? A generation can be classified as a period of time between 14 and 20 years. Uh, and so I want us now to meet Salem's generations. I want us to get ready to meet Salem's generation. I hope somebody's here from the greatest generation. That means that you were born between 1910 and 1924. So that means you're in your 90s. Is there anybody here that's in that generation? Anybody? Go on once. Where? Out, where well, amen. Come on, Salem, give it up for us. Are you the only one? Well, that's all right. You represent good. We so glad to see you. Amen. Represent strong. How old are you, honey? 94? Come on, Salem, give it up. Amen. All right, you don't, mama, you don't have to stand up no longer. Go on, have your seat. You did well. Yeah, you don't have to stand up no longer. I ain't putting no more pressure on you. So, we have that generation, and then we have the builder generation, 1925 to 1945. Where are you? I thought y'all had some music to go with each generation. What happened to the music? All right, all right, let's look. Oh, stand up, stand up. Let me see you, let me see you. We love you. Uh. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. You may have your seats. Thank you so much. And then we go to the baby boomer generation. 1946 to 1964. Uh, all right. You may be, you may, huh? I know that ain't our music. You may be sitting. You, you see me up there controlling music? <laughs> you see me up there? That Duke Ellington, that was, the, that was for the other generation. I, I'm clear. I'm clear. I know exactly what's that. All right, so at least match the music with the generation. Let's do that. All right. Because I, I actually picked this song for Generation X. Actually, I hope they get it right. We have uh, Generation X, 1965 to 1979. That's a shame. Good. Good. These are all house heads. These are all house heads. Every one of them. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Jesus is my help, my help, my help. Now, 
Now we have the millennials, generation wide, 1980 to 1994. Is that I'm getting hot in here? I'm gonna take off all my clothes. All right. Y'all getting saved in here. We're going to win all y'all souls. That's how we got to fix that. Last but definitely not least, Generation Z, 1995 to 2025. Where are you? 1995. Y'all so cool, y'all so cool. Y'all don't move, y'all don't do nothing, y'all so cool. Right on, right on, right on. There you have it, Salem. Come on, let's give it up for all the generations in the house. Mark, give me um, Psalm 78 back up in the, live, in the uh, New Living Translation. The, se the, sex, the text says, that's, that's right. You heard it from, you heard it from here. I was thinking in my head that the kids are cool, but the most sex generation, them old people. But anyway, let me go on. The text says, oh, my people, listen to my instructions. Open your ears to what I'm saying. The next verse says, I'm going all the way. For I will speak to you in a parable. I'll teach you hidden lessons from our past. Stories we've heard and known. Stories our ancestors handed down to us. Watch this. We will not hide these truths from our children. Read with me. We will tell the next generation about what? About the glorious deeds of the Lord. About his power and about his mighty one. We'll tell the next generation about the Lord. We'll tell the next generation about his glorious deeds. We won't hide them, but we will tell the next generation. Not only that, let's keep going. Let's keep going. There's some good stuff here. For he issued his laws to Jacob. He gave his instructions to Israel. He commanded our ancestors to teach them to who? Their children. Go on so that the next generation might know them, even the children not yet born. And they in turn will do what? Teach them to their children. Last verse. So each generation should set its hopes anew on who? God. On God, not forgetting his glorious miracles. And the last portion, and obeying his command. You all, the Bible is clear on how life is supposed to happen. The Bible is clear about the fact that each generation has a duty to the next generation. The next generation is not supposed to stumble upon the plans and the dictates of God, but the text says that each generation is supposed to teach the next generation the will and the way of God. Are, are, we, all, are we all together so far? E each generation is supposed to teach the next generation the word of God. The Bible is clear that each generation is supposed to pass on the teaching of scripture. Each generation is supposed to tell the Next generation, what thus said the Lord. Are y'all with me so far? And so, and so, and so, and so the great generation passed on its biblical beliefs and understanding to the builders. The builders passed on their biblical understanding to the baby boomers. We call that group the rotary dial. 
generation. The Rotary Dow generation passed the same biblical truths on to the push button generation. Because by the time the 40 somethings y'all came along, we had push button phones. Anybody remember those? The push button phone generation passed this biblical knowledge along to the flip phone generation. And the flip phone generation passed its knowledge on to the iPhone and the emoji generation. I have no clue what none of them emojis are all about, by the way. Is there anybody here that's just as lost with emojis as I am? You got to talk to me. Don't give me no word. Don't send me no word pictures. I can't decipher that. Glory to your name. Watch this. Salem, between the rotary dial generation and the emoji generation, not only did you end up having a push button phone and a flip phone, but also between the people in gray and the people in white, we have a 50 year time gap. Did you hear what I just said? Between the rotary generation and the emoji generation, there is a 50 year gap. Rotary, let me tell you something about the emoji generation. Let me tell you something about them because I think that we have been approaching our young people, our grandchildren, our, our, our children, I think we've been approaching them the wrong way. And, 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 and I think we're going to have to rethink some of our strategy. Y'all got time to wait on me? Let me tell you something about that generation. Lady Diana, notorious B.I.G., and Mother Teresa was not alive in their lifetime. You can't tell them nothing about Lady Diana. Lady Diana wasn't even alive in their lifetime. Since they have been alive, Google has always existed. This group have never, uh, all, all of you who are uh, Generation Z or dressed in white, stand again. Let me just see. Real quick, come on, you youngest, you got to stand up now. All right. Remain standing while I make the point with you. This group has never licked the postage stamp. Do you realize that? Never lick the postage stamp. Ever since they've been in the world, email has been the acceptable form of communication. This group, they've grown up with Wi-Fi as a luxury. When I make this sound, if I can probably make it, they don't even know what it means. You have mail. They've always had instant access. Watch this now, watch this. The therapeutic use of marijuana has always been legal in many states since they've been born. The Lion King has always been on Broadway since they've been born. Their first steps were recorded by a camcorder. I know some of you baby boomers would give your eye teeth to have had a camera around when you were walking. And then last of all, watch this now, watch this. Gay marriage has always been generally accepted since they've been in the earth. Are you with me? You all may have your seat. This is the first generation that every child has had a cell phone by age 11. 22 million of children between the ages of 12 and 17 got a cell phone. This means 
that this is the first generation of human beings to have always been connected to the whole world 24 hours a day, seven days a week, just by the device in their pocket. Huh? This is the first generation that has ever been connected to the whole world all day long. They don't know what it is to go to school and be disconnected. They don't know what it is to go to school and be disconnected from their family. They don't know what it is to go to school to be disconnected from their friends. They will never know what college is like being disconnected from their families months at a time. I wonder if I got any older people here. I wonder if I got anybody that remember when you went to college, we didn't see our families again for three months, four months. We got a chance to talk on a pay phone maybe once a week, but we had anxiety. The biggest anxiety about going away was we were homesick. But these young people will never be disconnected from their family. Almost, how many of you have a cell phone? Everybody here with a phone, raise your hand. Everybody in here with a phone. Watch this. 91% of all cell phone users never turn a cell phone off at night. That means you all, we're always on. We're always connected. It's something about that little buzz. <laughs> we just jump. We, we, I mean, at its command, we, we're always, oh, we, we, some endorphins. They've actually tested this. Go off in our mind when we, when we got a text or a message. Young people spend nine and a half hours every day. connected to a screen. However, Salem, that ain't what I'm here to really talk about. Because there is a bigger difference that we need to deal with, especially since Psalm 78 said that it is the responsibility of one generation to pass on to the next generation. What, what are we supposed to pass on? The things of God. I, I think we should have that test again. What is one generation supposed to pass to the next generation? Put up uh, Psalm 78 verse 4. Psalm 78 verse 4. We will not hide these truths from our children. Read with me. We will tell the next generation... All right, so we are supposed to be passing on to the next generation the deeds of God. We're supposed to pass in the next verse, it says, the laws of God. Are you with me? All right, so in light of that, all right, he put it up. Uh, he commanded our ancestors to teach them to their children. All right, that's good. Now, here's the big thing that I came to talk about. This is the first generation Generation Z, the people in white, and the tail end of those of you who are in red, to be born in a post-Christian world. I know you don't know what that means. This first generation to be born in a post-Christian world. Baby boomers when, and, and builders and, uh, and this one lady here. Um, We were born into a culture that was Christianized. At our schools, when we were children, we had Easter. We had the Easter play. We said Easter speeches at school. We had Christmas plays. We didn't have holiday cards. 
We had Christmas cards. We had Joseph and Mary and, and Jesus in the manger as a part of our schools. We had prayer. I wish I had some help here today. As a part of our culture, we could go into restaurants and we can look at families as they got ready to eat their food, bow their head, and everybody in the restaurant would be blessing their food. That's the world in which we grew up in. We could get in elevators or walk in restaurants and we could hear Christian music. We did not have music where profanity was allowed or people were, we could look at television and we can look at the Waltons at the dinner table saying the blessing, leave it to Beaver. We can look at them saying the blessing before they ate their food. Do you, you Things when we were born are uh, skewed Christian. Are you with me here? But this generation is the first generation, do you know, that there are no nightly TV shows that show families saying their prayers or the blessing. None of them, none of them. They, and they do it on purpose. They, they write scripts so that they don't have to show a family sitting at a dinner table, so that they don't have to show them praying. Uh, now... 78% of all of the young generation, when I say young, I'm talking about red and the white. They believe in the existence of God. That's a, that's a good thing. I said that's a good thing. 78% of all generation Z and millennials believe in the existence of God. But only 41% attend church. As a matter of fact, I think that's pretty evident when we look around and we see the colors. And uh, young people, I want you to know now, this is not a beat up on you session. I want to explain to the older generation why you are different than we are. Only 8% of Generation Z and the baby boom, I mean, uh, uh, millennials even cite a religious leader as a role model. All right? Got to take some water for this one. This one. No other generation has had pornography so available and in such extreme terms as this age. 70% of 18 through 34-year-olds are regular viewers of pornography. Holy is the lamb. 70%. It's quiet in here. I ain't never this quiet in here. I, don't, I, don't, I remember when somebody was there, Reverend Stephen asked for 30 seconds of silence. It wasn't this quiet. The average age of kids that start watching pornography today is 11 years old. This is a post-Christian world. There are 73 billion people in the whole world. Watch this now, 73 billion. The amount of people who watched a particular pornographic website was 65 billion. Let it sink in now. Seven billion people in the whole world. One pornographic website had 65 billion hits. This is the first generation that does not believe in the authority of scripture or the authority of the New Testament church. First generation, first generation. I had one of my pastor friends, he was talking to his uh, daughter and her friends, and he was trying out his sermon, and he was telling them, these are all young 18, 19 year olds, he was telling them that he was gonna talk about, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and that Jesus said that he was, and Jesus is the only way to God, and they asked him, why is Jesus the only way? 
And they argued with him that there has to be more than one way to God. Now, young people, and I want to talk to the old crowd now, they're not bad people. I believe they were raised by a generation of people that skipped teaching them the word of God. So we have reached a generation that has no memory of the word of God. They ain't never been taught the word of God. I don't know who we thought was teaching them. I, I, we might have thought this Sunday school, maybe, maybe we thought uh, uh, the school was teaching them. But I came to tell you that in the absence of anybody teaching them, nobody has taught them. And the word of God now is not their authority. I wish I had some help here today. They asked uh, a group of kids starting college in 2015 the following questions. They asked the emoji generation to take this test, the following test. They asked them, name the four gospels. The second question was, where was Jesus born? The next question was, uh, what Bible story talks about the man on the Jericho road? Then they ask them, what are the first five books of the Old Testament? Then they ask them, what is the golden rule? And then they said, last of all, name five of the Ten Commandments. Not a child entering college could answer those questions. And so you see, Salem, the challenge that's before the church is that generationally, we're speaking different languages. Generationally, we have been shaped by different beliefs. You're expecting your grandchildren to see things the way you saw things when you were coming up, and they can't see them because they didn't come up in the world that you came up in. And you mad at them about not understanding and you don't understand why they don't understand. I'm telling you today why they don't understand. They don't understand because when you grew up, the word of God was the authority. When you grew up, the local church was the authority. But in the world in which they're growing up in, the word of God ain't the authority and the church ain't the authority and they could give a flip about your preacher. Are you with me here? How do we learn to speak the language of the next generation while at the same time not being offensive? How do we honor Psalm 78 and pass this book on to the next generation and we speak rotary and they speak in emoji? And I'm trying to communicate with them in rotary, and they sending me back pictures. But yet, I am supposed to teach them what I know. Are y'all with me here? All right, all right. Our goal, Salem, our goal is to reach the next generation. Our goal is to reach the generation that's following uh, behind us. That's what the Bible told us to do. I don't know about you, but I'm pained by the fact that 60 or 75% of us got on gray shirts. And uh, the rest of us got on blue shirts, sprinkled in this crowd are some red shirts, and then there's some white shirts. It bothers me. It shouldn't be like that. How then do we reach this next generation? The only way to reach the next generation is by knowing what they think about us. 
And so I came in the last six minutes that I have left to tell you the uphill challenge that we have because Generation Z, people in white and the people in red, they got a different view of the church than you had when you were growing up. How do they see us? Number one, and here's our challenge, here's our challenge. Young people today, they see the church as hypocritical. Ask the person next to you, are you a hypocrite? Amen. They, they view us as saying one thing and then doing another. That, that's the way you are. Now, these young people, your grandchildren, that you're trying to reach, I, I want to show you now, they see you as a hypocrite. They see the church as hypocritical. Uh, they see us as uh, unreal. They see the church, number two, as only caring about numbers. Uh, they, we say we baptize so many people and so many people here. They, they see us and they hear that and it sounds to them that we care about the number but we don't care about the person. Number three, watch this now. Young people today see the church as anti-homosexual. They say that we are bigots and that we show disdain for gay and lesbian people. Number four, they think the church is old fashioned. They think the church is boring and they think the church is out of touch. Young people, y'all not saying amen, I see y'all just listening. Number five, they think the church is too political and that we promote a political agenda. And then last of all, they think the church is too judgmental. They think the church is too judgmental. I am not here to refute. Watch this now, emojis. I'm not here to refute any claims that's made by the emoji generation. That's not my position today. I'm not here to tell you that you're wrong. I'm not here to say that uh, you have a wrong perception or an idea or view of today's church. Because if that's the perception of your age group, the people that you're in school with, the people that you run with, the people on your block, the people that's your age, if that's y'all's perception, your perception is reality. And we have to accept your perception as reality. Are y'all with me here? I am here this morning because Psalm 78 says that each generation is obligated to pass the teaching of this book to the next generation. If we are viewed by your generation as being hypocritical, not caring, anti-homosexual, old-fashioned, too political, and judgmental, then we need your help. We need you to help us change our language. We need you to help us change our style. We need you to help us not be boring. We need you to help us not be judgmental and not be critical. Uh, you see, I got to reach your generation. I don't hate you. I'm not mad at you. I'm not against you. I have baptized most of you. I held you when you were little babies. I'm not against your generation. But now, if your generation is seeing us different, then y'all got, little baby saying, I see you, she just. If your generation is seeing the church different, then you gotta help us. Let me tell you what you gotta help us do. You gotta help us 
communicate with your generation and we have to feel and figure out how we can do that without changing the message that we're supposed to be handing down. Teach us how to draw them pictures then. I'll say it with pictures. I don't care. If I have to say it with pictures, I'll say it with pictures. If I have to change my tone, I'll change my tone. If I have to calm down, I'll calm down. If the music ain't right, we'll make the music right. Whatever we have to do. But you don't have the right to sit and not like what's going on, I'm inviting you, I'm begging you, I'm telling you, I'm pleading with you, then help me reach your generation. Show me how to do it. Show me what to say. Tell me what to say. How can I reach your friends? I don't want your friends to miss out on the greatest thing that I have found in my lifetime, which is Jesus Christ. I don't want your friends to miss it. I don't want your friends to be lost and following the ways of this world. I want to help them, and I need you to help me help your friends. We young people are on the same team. We ain't adversaries. We don't have to fight and argue. So I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. Tuesday night at 7 o'clock, I'm going to do a Facebook Live and an Instagram Live. Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, is just for millennials. I want y'all to tell me how to do it right. If we don't have millennials, stand up. I need you now. Church is too big not to have more red shirts. Stay, remain standing. You're going to be standing for a little while, so don't worry about it. We're trending old. This group is passing off the scene. It's time to hand it off to you. So I'm going to be on Facebook Live, and you got to tell me what the church is doing wrong and how the church is going to meet uh, the needs of your generation. I'm going to meet you Tuesday night, 7 o'clock, Salem's Facebook page. I'm going to be talking to you. It's going to be just for me and y'all so y'all can tell me how to reach your generation. Thursday night at 7 o'clock, it's just going to be for Generation Y. It's just going to be, matter of fact, Generation Y, I want y'all to come to the altar. Gen Z, Z, thank you. Generation Z. I want y'all to come to the altar. All the young people in white. Everybody born 1995 and under. I just want y'all to come to the altar. Don't push them all the way. Don't push them all the way. I need some room. Come on, come on. I'm getting ready to come down here to the altar and I'm going to kneel on my knees and I want y'all to pray for me. And I want y'all to lay hands on me that I would be able to reach your generation. And we're going to hand the mic to y'all and y'all going to pray. Where are you uh, millennials and the people in red stand? I want you to point your hand this way 
because I want y'all praying for me too. But I want Generation Z to lay hands on me and teach me how to reach your generation. And I want y'all to pray for me. And they're going to give y'all the mic and y'all can pray for me. And I want the rest of the church to pray. Because if we lose our kids, we've lost it all. Dear Heavenly Father, I pray unto you to say thank you for each and every one of us that has made it here today. I pray that we, our Generation Z, be able to reach past the meets and be able to reach each and every one of us. We are hard to get to, but we also have a mind. We just have to find it. Lord, just let us please be able to find you and have something with you and have praises with you. Because we do go through stuff. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we want you to lay your hands on Reverend Meeks. We pray that you will give him the strength to be able to give us what we need as a church and as a generation so we could be able to know you better and be able to come to you better. We pray that you will bless our parents and bless the rest of our family so they could help us as well because we do go through stuff as well. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day. We thank you for starting us on our way, Lord. We thank you for every generation that has been passed down on to us, Lord, to at least help us try to understand the word of God, Lord. We thank you for our pastor, for helping us, trying to get to know us better, trying to help us understand his own generation and our own generation, Lord. I really, I really thank you, Lord, for everything that you've done for us and done for our pastor, Lord. I hope that he will be able to understand us and give us a way to give, to teach us about you, Lord, in our own language, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Father God, we come here to say thank you. Please touch Pastor Meeks in a special way. We pray that he can touch our young people. We pray that he can touch their souls, save their souls in a special way. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I love you all. The church loves you all. Your grandparents love you all. We don't quite, we don't get you all the time. We don't understand you all the time because y'all talk with pictures and we talk with words. But y'all not bad kids. And don't let anybody tell you that you're bad kids. You all are good kids. And you all have a church behind you, and you have families behind you, and you have people who are providing for you, and you have people who love you, and we are among that group. And so uh, rather than drifting away from the church and saying that the church don't have it together, we submit to you so that y'all can help us and so we could get it together because you got to pass this off to your kids. And you got to pass this off to your grandkids. And so you too valuable for us to lose. And I don't care what the devil in hell says, we ain't going to lose y'all. Y'all are too valuable to us. All right? Can I have a group hug? Come on, pull in tight, pull in tight, pull in tight. <laughs> Come on, Salem, can we hug our kids as they're on their way back to their seats? Come on, give it up, give it up. Can we hug our kids? Come on, you can get out of your seat, come on. Stop being stiff, let's hug our kids as they go back to their seats. Father and our God, I just want to pray for Reverend Meeks. I just want to thank you for his gift and his obedience um, unto you, God. And uh, Lord, we just pray that you continue to guide him. Um, and don't keep him encouraged, God. It's not all on him to 
reach out to us, but give us, give him the words to say, Lord, um, to reach out to us, God. Um, but also um, change our hearts so that we won't think that church is boring, that we will be cooperative and um, want to come to church, God, and want to um, be a part in ministry and uh, developing ourselves, God. Um, just continue to guide Reverend Meeks. Uh, thank you for him and the gift that you've given him to reach out to us, God. And so we just pray that you continue to strengthen him um, and minister to him, uh, that he be able to reach out to us and give us um, life-changing uh, scripture and lessons each and every week, God, that we will be able to apply to our lives. And it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Amen.